Hello there. In this coding tidbit, we're going to show you how you can use a color sensor to be able to see if your character is touching a specific color. There's lots of applications for this. You might use it to sense the walls of a maze. You might use it to sense a type of object that you want your character to pick up. And you might use it for something like a drag and drop application that you can use to have students choose the right answer. So let's get coding. The first thing we always do is we always start off by breaking down what it is we'd like to do. To do that, right click on the coding area and click on add comment. Now that you've done that, let's go ahead and work out our plan. In this case, what we want to do is we want to, um, we want to drag our character, our sprite, to a specific colored box and uh, tell the player if that is the right box. Um, so we'll have three colored boxes. Let's say three boxes. And let's make the first box will be purple box. And for the purple box, let's say, no, nope, that's, um, we'll say not the right color. Not the right color. And we'll play a some sort of a wrong or a bunk sound. And for, we'll make another box called the blue box. And we'll also say still not the right color. And we'll also play a bonk sound. Then we'll have a, let's say an orange box. And in this case, we'll say, that's it. That's my favorite color. And we'll play a hooray sound. And that's it. So let's go ahead and start coding this. The first thing I'm going to do is I need a couple of boxes in order to make this happen. So I'm going to come over here to my sprite area and I'm going to click on this little cat plus symbol where it says choose a sprite. And instead of choosing one this time, I'm going to go ahead and paint a sprite. To paint a sprite, all I need is a box in this case. So on the left hand side, you see these drawing tools. I'm going to click the box, which is right at the bottom. And I'm going to choose the color from here. This is already purple, so I'll use that one. I'm going to click on the outline and choose not to have an outline by clicking on this uh, blank square with a uh, red line going at, at a diagonal. So this will make just a purple box. And let's uh, make a box about this size. You'll notice it has a little crosshairs. If you click and drag that, you can center that right in the middle. So that's my box. I'm going to name the costume. I'm just going to call this costume purple in this case. Uh, and now that I've got that, I'm uh, ready to go. So I'm going to go back to my code. I'm going to take this box. I'm going to move it maybe up to the upper left part of the screen. And for the cat, I'm going to move it down here. It's always a good idea to name them. They're named Sprite 1 and Sprite 2 right now. I put my plan on my cat. So I'm going to rename this one Player. And for Sprite 2, I'm going to rename this one Box 1. Great, now that I've got box one, I'm gonna right click and duplicate that. And I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna right click and duplicate again. And I've got box one, two, and three. They're all purple though, so let's go into box two and up to the costumes tab. And in the costumes, I'm gonna change the fill from purple to something else. So uh, the way I'm gonna do that is there's a paint bucket being sort of poured out right here. I'm gonna click on that paint bucket. And then I'm gonna click on the color. And I think I said I wanted blue, so let's find nice blue color and I think that's a good blue we'll use that now I've got this blue box which is that box two so I'm going to put that one in the middle and I'm going to grab this box three and do the same thing but I'm going to turn it orange so I've got box three down here I can see it's selected and over in costumes I can see that it has a purple costume but I want to change that to an orange I'm going to call that costume orange and I want to make sure I have the fill bucket selected and from there, I'm going to go ahead and drag my sliders till I get a nice orange color. And there you go. Now I've got a purple, a blue, and an orange box. And this is named orange, and it's named box three, so it's costume is orange, but the name of the sprite is box three. If I go to box two, you can see the name of the costume is still purple, so I'm going to change that to blue. And the name of the sprite is box two. All right, with those in place, I think we are ready to code. So I'm gonna go click on my player and I'm gonna put all the code for this on my player. Um, I'm running out of a little bit of space here, so I'm gonna use 
a handy tool to minimize the size of the screen for a little bit. Over here in the top right hand corner, you can see I have a couple of different setups. I'm going to click on the setup that makes the stage a little bit smaller. That gives me a little more room to code. Now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I want this to start when I click the green flag, first of all. So I'm going to go to events and drag when green flag is clicked. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that um, the cat always starts down here, somewhere in the middle. So I uh, am going to maximize the size of my stage again to see what the cat's position is. It looks like it's 190, or I'm sorry, it looks like it's 13 and negative 111. So those are the positions I want to start it in. So I'm going to go over to motion and I'm going to choose go to 13, negative 111. So that'll be the starting position anytime I click on this cat. Great. Uh, now that I've got that, what I need to do is I need to forever sense if the cat is touching a specific color. So the way that I can do that is I'm going to go to my control and I'm going to grab a forever loop. Now that I've got forever, I am going to uh, make sure, first of all, that the cat is pointing towards my mouse pointer. So if I go to motion, you can see there's an option here to make it point towards the mouse pointer. So my cat will uh, always be pointing wherever I've got my mouse pointer in this case. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to see if I'm touching the purple color. I can go to control to get my if statement. And that's about the fifth block down, fourth, one, two, three, four blocks down. And I'm going to drag that and put that right in my forever loop. So I'm going to forever be checking something. Uh, the something is the thing that goes right in here. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to go over to sensing. And in sensing, I can see I've got some different options. And the second one down is if this sprite is touching a specific color. So I'm going to grab that and drag that right into my condition for my if statement. And I've got the if touching color green. That's not the color I want. So I'm going to click on the color. And at the bottom of the color, there's an eyedropper. If you click on that eyedropper, that'll allow you to choose a specific color uh, by clicking on an object. So I'm just going to go to my purple and click on that object. And now you can see I've got that exact purple. So if it's touching the purple, according to my plan over here, I think I said I wanted to say not the right color and play a bonk sound. So I'm going to um, look for my, let's play the sound first, actually. I'll go to sound. If I go to start sound, there's only a meow sound. If I click on that, I can see there's only one sound for me. So I'm going to click on the sounds tab up top. I'm going to choose a new sound by clicking on the plus. There's lots of different sounds in here. I'm going to go to the wacky sounds. And I think I'll try this pluck sound. That's a good one. Okay, so I like that pluck sound. Let me go ahead and choose my good sound now as well. So same thing. Click on choose a sound. Go to wacky. And in Wacky, there's one here, Wobble, Whiz, uh, yeah. there you go, Tada sounds good for me for getting the right, the right answer here, or the right color in this case. So now I've got my sounds, I can go back to code, and now I can say start sound, and I'm going to put that right in here, start sound instead of Tada, the purple is wrong, so I'm going to start the pluck sound, and then I'm going to go to looks to grab a say block. And in this case, I'm going to say something to the effect of, um, that's not the right color. That's not my favorite color. How about that? Great. If I look, uh, you're always looking for patterns when you're coding. And in this case, I see the purple box is not the right color. Blue box is very similar, so it's still not the right color. So I'm going to just right click on this whole if statement and duplicate it. And it's pretty similar to everything I want, except I need to change the color. So I'm going to click on Touching Color, get the eyedropper, go over to the blue. And now I can also play the pluck sound, but in this case, I need to say something to the effect of, nope, still not right. No, I don't like blue. How about that? They could have started with blue, so I don't want to say still. Now I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to right click on the if statement and duplicate it. And I get all of that stuff with my if. And I'm going to change this color by clicking on the color, choosing the eyedropper, and choosing the orange color. And now instead of playing the pluck sound, I want to change the ta-da sound and say, that's it. I love orange. Great. 
Great, so now we have this working. The only problem is the cat doesn't go anywhere. You can see the cat's following my mouse cursor, but uh, the cat's not really going anywhere. So what I wanna do now is I need to make the cat draggable. So let me collapse my code over here, my comment. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to events and I'm gonna grab the when this sprite is clicked event. And there's a very simple sensing block that I can use. Go over to sensing and choose uh, set drag mode to draggable. So that means when I am clicking on this sprite, I can actually drag the, um, I can drag the cat around to test this. So now that this, I've got this all going, all I have to do is I need to click on the flag and see if it works. I'm gonna click on the flag and I'm going to drag my mouse to the purple. And the cat says, that's not my favorite color. Now you can hear it because it's in a forever loop, it's gonna keep playing this over and over. I'm gonna do the same thing for the blue. And he says, nope, I don't like blue. I'm gonna do the same thing over here for the orange. And the cat loves the orange. Now you'll notice I've got the cat following my mouse cursor and it's rotating all over the place, kind of around its center point. I want it to point where I'm pointing, but I want it to stay standing up. So there's a couple of things I can do to do that. First of all, I'm gonna click the stop button. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is when this first uh, green flag is clicked, I want to make sure that the cat is pointing uh, in 90, towards 90 degrees so it looks like it's standing up. So let's go to motion and let's grab a point in direction block and I'm going to point it in direction 90. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set my rotation style to left right. This way my cat can only rotate uh, between left and right instead of flipping all over the place. So if I click this now, you can see now it's standing up. And as I move my mouse, um, the cat is pointing towards the mouse, but it's not gonna flip up and down anymore. And we've got a cat saying, that's it, I love orange. Nope, I don't like blue. And that's not my favorite color. Great. So this is a simple demonstration of how you can sense colors. And if your Sprite is touching a specific color, like I said at the beginning, there are lots of applications for this. You might have your cat uh, pick up items of a specific color or maybe a specific color would, um, would hurt your sprite in a specific way or you might use it like I did here for some sort of learning interaction where students sense uh, they drop their sprite on a specific color and based on where they drop their sprite, you can check whether or not they've got the right answer. So that's it. Go out and have fun.